Cool. All right, we got episode 41 today of Putting You in Your Place. Today I'm here with my first political candidate, <laughs> Tanya Hockett's here, and um, we're going to kind of introduce her uh, or let her introduce herself, and we're going to kind of talk about some of the things that she's got going on and some of her beliefs and how she thinks she can affect the town of Christiansburg in a positive way. Tanya, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. I appreciate you, um, you know, having the courage to come on a platform like this and, and, and put out your beliefs to the public. Be easy to just collect your signatures and, and do the social media thing mm-hmm. and and not not speak on like actually what you believe in. So uh, that takes a lot of courage. So let's get into something personal for you. Uh, you know, I know that you've kind of crushed the K92 secret sound. <laughs> I want to know about your, uh, well, you might not want to give away your like theories and strategies, but tell us about that. Like how much money have you made on that? And, oh like, gosh. Like you, uh, you've crushed that game, right? We've won several times and we've also helped our, uh, some of our friends to win. So when we kind of collaborate and figure those clues out, we'll pass them on to friends and be like, all right get in there and so they've won uh we're really competitive we're a really competitive couple yeah and um and so there's really no secret you just have to get in there you gotta read the clues the sound almost doesn't even matter uh but yeah we're we're digging in there we're investigating the clues you know so you just know the time to show up to listen and and you know the the numbers to call and you just game theory right yep that's it we're working through we're trying to figure out those keywords we're trying to put them together and make a sentence that makes some sense and then we're just smashing that redial button that's right. it <laughs> i wish it was more exciting than that right but really it's just competitive research that's it that's awesome <laughs> so so you've you uh, as far as that goes like how many times ha- have you won it and how many times have you supplied the information to fr- like do you get disqualified for a certain period of time where you can't win it again we do. yeah so uh, their rules it's something like you know you can't win the secret sound personally more than like once in a year uh, and you can't have a person in your house win it for i think about three months i think is the time frame you know any big prize gotcha once you win then anybody else in your household is disqualified from winning for about three months so the last uh, time the secret sound came around last year actually we could we weren't even eligible because Robbie won a computer you know my husband he won a computer off the radio so we weren't even eligible so that was a time that we just helped our friends to to get it Um, and I think a total we think we've either won it or helped a friend win it a total of seven times Wow (laughs) that's wild that's wild that's really cool that's yeah. a really cool story. And it's a progressive thing, right? Like there's a different, it, it, like it keeps going up and up and up until someone hits it. That's it. What was the highest number that you were able to win it at? Well, so they, well, um, they've only been doing a flat $5,000 prize the last couple years. Uh, in the beginning, though, it was progressive. And that was the first time we won it. And Robbie won, I think around $2,900 gotcha. was what it was up to. And we took the kids to Disney World. Nice. <laughs> Sweet. Mm-hmm. On K92. Disney World on K92. I, know. I appreciate K92 for all of our family <laughs> vacations. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, hey, let's let's dive into, you know, why Christiansburg Town Council and and like why you're, you know, like what is in your heart that you think you can accomplish and like why are you why are you jumping into the political arena? Why am I jumping in? Yeah. I I th- have always been really fascinated by local politics. And I'm actually a former employee of of Christiansburg. So it's really interesting to see it from that level, to be interested in local politics. And then from an education standpoint, you know, I have a master of public administration. So I do have education in the theories behind local politics. Okay. So I'm just, I'm fascinated. I realize that local politics make just a huge impact, you know, direct benefit from direct taxpayer dollars are poured into local economy and then the local government is going to is going to use that to directly impact the citizens so you know i just i'm always so surprised at how passionate people are at a national level and they don't always carry those same passions locally um so i'm running because i think it's it's very important what happens on the local level and following a pandemic year we're going to have tough decisions to make we've got three open seats and really, that leaves a lot of uh, opportunity open for where we can kind of guide the progression of Christiansburg as we get out of this tumultuous, you know, year where we've had a lot of economic hits in the area. Yeah. 
and, and you felt every bit of that, right? Mm-hmm. Like your husband is a is a uh, is he part? Uh, like what is his what is his role in Bull and Bones? So, yeah, he's the general manager, so he's gotcha. not an owner. He's the general manager of just gotcha. Christiansburg, gotcha. but surely, you know, of course, we felt those direct impacts. I mean, running on just a very tiny staff, um, even having to close down for a week until they could figure out what to do and what grants to apply for and how to use those grants, um, uh, you know, appropriately. So it was really, it was a really tricky, tumultuous year, you know, for all businesses and of course for his. So now that you've experienced that and and you know the impact of that and how the community leaders could, could uh, rally around that and and help people get through that. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, makes a lot of sense. You, you've got you've got some experience. People might not know that you have, mm-hmm. you know. So that's interesting, mm-hmm. you know, and that you've worked for the town. You've got education in this type of thing. Um, I, I don't know that people would know that about you. No, yeah, so, probably not. Yeah, not unless they read it. I'm not great at talking about myself. <laughs> right. So you're getting into something that is probably going to require you to get out of your comfort zone and do that. It will. You know? Absolutely. Um. So let's just kind of get into something, some some policy that you might have your eye on of like and, and have an opinion on. You know, like how did you feel about uh, the eighteen million dollar park going in on Christiansburg in Christiansburg? So I think the park is it has such, so many interesting amenities, things that I think are really exciting to have in Christiansburg. I I mean I really do think that those will be. Um, wonderful features for the for the citizens and really interesting you know a destination area for outsiders um the timing is tricky the timing is tough you know i know that it's really difficult to um to make a decision about such an expensive project such an expensive capital project when we are coming out of an economically difficult year so i don't love the timing i do think that there are really wonderful opportunities for a park but the timing is really uh, is a challenge but it's coming so you know i think the best thing we can do is try to figure out how do we make this work how does how do we uh, fit this into the budget where do those dollars come from when is it paid for over how many years and you know are we passing that burden to the taxpayers? Because I will, I don't think that that would be the right thing to do. Yeah, I mean, I think I think um, having things to expand our tax base to make Christiansburg a destination for Central and Southwest Virginia, or or maybe even the region, would be a, an economically great thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But is is uh, the burden of a budget shortfall going to hurt us? By doing that, then then we're gonna have to go raise other funds and rip more money away from small businesses and and people that consume from those small businesses here locally. Because are we gonna raise sales taxes? Are we gonna like uh, food tax? Like like where does this money come from? Mm-hmm. And how can we commit to something so large um, with with the unknowingness of it all? Right. Right. And I think we're very lucky to have received so many grants. You know, we have there. There's a lot of funding coming from a lot of places in support of the park, which I think is an absolute. I mean, that's a wonderful thing. I'm so glad that we've taken advantage of those funding opportunities. But the remainder of that to raise taxes in order to pay for it makes me a bit nervous. Um, and, you know, I want to make sure we maximize the impact of that park so that we don't have to do those things. Yeah. Got it. So what are you doing besides, you know, taking part in a show like this? What are you doing to get your name out there? I mean, how are you executing a strategy? I mean, we talked off air that you were on TikTok and like, mm-hmm. social media platforms. Like, you know, what are you doing to? I mean, how many signatures did you did? How many signatures did you have to get? Like, so yeah, you have to get 125 signatures when you run for a local office. Yeah. But a lot of times, people don't realize they live in the county and have a Christiansburg address, or maybe um, they haven't updated their voter registration since moving from somewhere else. And so they always recommend that we get extra. I think I ended up getting around 180, 185, 190 maybe signatures. So uh, we were able to leap across that. I got the call today that all my signatures were verified. I'm, an, I'm officially on the ballot. Nice. Uh, it was tough work, yeah. you know, especially in a pandemic year where I don't know if people are comfortable with me coming up to their homes. So I really relied on friends and them knowing their neighbors and their neighborhoods um, and directly connecting with them, going out and visiting with them, talking to them. And then, uh, you know, friends were so gracious to introduce me to their neighbors and help me get more signatures. So that was a big help. It's, it's hard. So, so uh, you know, I encourage, 
you know, I've I've kind of been like the only one in my space that is taken advantage of like really getting my name out there in social media. Mm-hmm. It's made a huge impact. I mean, people people are are learning who I am and they're they're being more aware of who I am every single day. Mm-hmm. So I would encourage you to kind of maybe take on that same, you know, Facebook Live. I mean, I'm I'm doing Facebook Lives while I'm walking my dog, you know, like like this is the simplest stuff, just just rambling off of something that I'm passionate about in the moment or that I wanted to talk about. Mm-hmm. Are you doing anything like that? So I haven't started doing anything like that yet. So my first goal was start getting signatures. My next goal is start helping people understand you know who I am, what it is I bring to the table, why they should even want to consider me or be interested in me as a candidate. Uh, but yes, you know, Facebook Lives, I want to make myself accessible. It's okay if I get asked a tough question. If I don't have a good answer, then hopefully I'll have that grace to find a good answer um, for those questions that are, you know, that may take me off guard, but I want to be accessible. So going Facebook Live, making sure that people have my contact information, you know, directly connecting with folks face to face when, you know, if they're comfortable with that. Those are all things that uh, are my next steps to do now that I'm on the ballot. Yeah. Well, I would encourage you just to double down. Yeah. I mean, you know, in the political space, it, it unfortunately, um, it's kind of like a popularity contest. It's like who has the nicest face and the nicest tone of voice. And, and we hope, we just hope that they actually have thoughtful, uh, you know, they have thoughtful um, thoughts. You know, they, mm-hmm. they're, they're thinking with their heart. They're not thinking with political power, motivation in their mind. And, um, and and that's one of the things I don't like about politicians is stand for something and, and, and write it out and, and don't pander to say things that the community wants you to say and and then not not perform based because of what your real beliefs are. Mm-hmm. Don't don't say certain things to get elected and then not do them. Yeah. You know, and that's that's a lot of the political climate that I see. And, and now that I'm you know 38 years old, it just feels like the more and more that I observe, the more and more I see of of that particular thing. Mm-hmm. So like you know whatever your beliefs are, stand strong for them. Get them out there. Let the public decide if if you're the person that they trust to get in there and then execute. Yeah. So that's like my political strategy with you. Like is like I think I think you will be that. I think I think if if you always just walk on that, then you'll serve and you'll do the great things that you want to do and you'll accomplish things. And then when when the thing shifts, then then you'll go do something different. Mm-hmm. You know. And I think that's the way it should be. You know. Um, so yeah, I mean, I just, I'm very passionate about this. If you can't tell, like, like <laughs> I, I want, tell. I want great leaders. I want great leaders that that um, that stand for something, you know, mm-hmm. and that will actually produce results. Yeah. So, um, so that's my little rant on on you. that. <laughs> yeah. So, so like, as a as a concerned citizen, as a concerned citizen, uh, somebody that grew up and loves Christiansburg, but you know, I like, I love the New River Valley too, like. Do you, and I got to put you on the spot here, do you feel like Blacksburg is a good example for for the the New River Valley? Like everything, all the protocols, all the restrictions, all the, all the things that they're doing right now, I would think that you're aware and observing that. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's a good example? I don't think that any of the other governing bodies around Blacksburg – should take what Blacksburg's decided to do, what their constituents have elected them to do and the decisions that they've made, and duplicate their efforts. I'm not saying that there aren't good things that we can't learn from you know our neighbors in, in Blacksburg and, and any other area, really. Yeah. But I think that Christiansburg has to make decisions for Christiansburg based on what Christiansburg is as a town. They're really different towns. Their populations you know, oftentimes have different ideas about the way things are run. And Blacksburg's leadership you know, has been elected by people who have voted for them to make the stances that they're making. If they're not happy with those stances, obviously, where you speak out is election season. Yeah. And in Christiansburg, there's, it's not that we can't learn anything from our partners. Absolutely. And we should, you know, look for efforts that work well and, and don't work well and kind of talk about those things and, and 
um, and learn from the lessons of others. But I think Christiansburg has to make its own decisions. And you can't look at a place like Blacksburg and go, I think we should duplicate all of the things they're doing because they're our neighbors, because yeah. they're a different town than we are. And they've always played Big Brother. You know, Blacksburg has always been economically a little bit more vibrant. It, mm-hmm. It's it's the hub of the New River Valley. You know, it's kind of what cycles the economics. So if if they're the ones cycling the economics, they're the ones that everybody's looking up to. Like they're the they're the beacon of the example that everybody wants to strive to be. You know, because they they get they've got the majority of the capital. Yeah. So they make the decisions. So. And the example I'm really talking about is, um, you know, I'm a pro 2A guy. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, I don't want that. I don't, I don't want free speech censored. I, I want, I want freedom of speech. I want, I want the right to carry. I want the right to bear arms. You know, that's important to me. And when you see Blacksburg legislating uh, firearms in public spaces and and public open air spaces, that's concerning. You know, I feel like I feel like they've they've been trimming away at civil liberty uh in that regard um for a long time Mm -hmm. and you know and they get to stand on they get to stand on the virginia tech massacre and and you know that's that's tough to try to tread in a thoughtful way to say we are compassionate about that but that doesn't equal the law abiding a a law abiding a citizen's uh less rights Mm -hmm. you know so there's a juggling act that you have to be thoughtful and compassionate but then you also have to not take away regular people Mm -hmm. you know we're talking about we're talking about someone in the fringe that that lost his mind we're not talking about me or we're not talking about normal gun owners Mm -hmm. so so like that example you know and and christiansburg looked at that and was like there was a couple people that was like that might be something we want to do too, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm concerned f- about that, and I would love your take on that. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, and I like what you said about being thoughtful and compassionate about that. You know, and I agree. We do want to be thoughtful and compassionate about that, absolutely, with every fiber of my being. And I recognize that people are looking for actions. They want to take actions. They want to feel like they are taking steps that are going to prevent future incidents. And uh, what where I have to pause is to make sure that any actions that I take are in line with the constitution and the town's charter. I have to make sure that I'm defending citizen rights and I want to take actions that I know will make an impact on the causes of these issues. And so, you know, I would personally not support further gun restrictions in Christiansburg. And it's just because I think what we end up doing with some of the decisions that are that are made on a local level starts to punish good people, law-abiding people, and yeah. doesn't actually make an impact on the the issues that we're facing. Yeah. I know there are real issues, and I think you know the mental health system is just is tattered and needs so much repair. I think that focusing our energies on something like that. While that is difficult to do at a local level, I think that is where our real solutions come from, is helping people find their way out of those miserable places that drive them to think there's no other option. And putting restrictions on folks who have been through their training, they're following the laws, they're, um, they're very safe, and, uh, and they're just trying to protect themselves and protect others, you know, I want to take actions, but is the action to punish them? I don't think so. And, you know, I know that that's a that's a really hard topic it is. for people because I do want to change something, but I don't know that that's the right change. Yep. We all agree that we need to go from point A to point Z. The problem is, how do you get from point A to point Z? Mm-hmm. That That's the that's the debate that will go on f- for the end of time. Right. Um, I mean, that that's just something that um, when you get down to it. Uh, the gun crimes happen in, you know, the majority of the gun crime happens in gun-free zones, you know? So, so we've got to start coming back to family values and like, you know, and, you know, show that there's a sense of community and that we care and are compassionate to the people that feel 
cast aside. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that feel cast aside are the ones uh, that create and commit these crimes, Mm -hmm. you know, and 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 a tool to cause harm will be found if if it's really serious, you you know the gun the gun is just a uh, an accessible tool. They'll just go do something else, find some other means to create the harm in the way that they want to create the harm. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, yeah. So so having these soft targets, having these having these areas that that criminals know that they're not going to get that everybody's just going to cower and and run from and and it's just going to be clean picking, you know, easy picking. Uh, for them, unfortunately, those are where the crimes happen. There's where the evil happens. And we have to understand as a society that evil is a part of history. It's a part of the past and it'll be a part of the future. So punishment, punishment of these acts needs to be taken seriously. Yeah. So so when we're legislating, we're legislating like these these looser, looser and looser punishments, uh, based on humane behavior, uh, again, you know that's a that's a topic of like the death penalty, you know, and that's a beyond that's beyond your, you know what you're mm-hmm. going for, but you know a political ideology understands like there you know we don't want to become a harmless society, you know, because the harmless society gets taken advantage of by evil way more than a peaceful society and there's a difference between peaceful and and harmless so you know i carry i carry daily because of my job i go i go to strange places with people that i've never been i've never met right so if i'm if i'm going to do that i'm going to i'm going to act with compassion but if they threaten me if they put me in a spot i've got a way to get out of that spot hopefully because i've trained i can pull i can pull my gun out of the holster and I can I can do what I need to do to survive to save my life, mm-hmm. but I have no chance of that. Then I'm going to die, you know. The, the likelihood of me dying goes up a hundred percent at that point. Yeah. So I just uh, I, I really feel like I love what you said that you got to refer back to the Constitution. You got to refer back to that, and and the founding documents mean something. Sounds like they mean something to you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Cool. Mm-hmm. Well, then then I can get behind you. You know, like I, I can get behind anybody that will stand up for the Constitution and not walk on it. And too too often right now, I feel like people are walking on it. Yeah. So I love to hear that. Yeah. And you know, I think it's one thing to apply the Constitution and go, I don't like what that says. And I don't you know, I wish it said more. But it's the Constitution, in my opinion, and any document that binds your elected officials is not there to give them power it's not there to grant them you know three wishes it's really there to restrict all of the to all of the ways that they can impede upon your life your life and um and your and your happiness and the pursuit of you know of your happiness so that's how i look at those things you know and i know governor northam has put into place you know instituting those background checks even on private sales and and has and passed a lot of lot legislation last year and you know i hope that those that the you know i hope that those um different pieces of legislation help bring some peace to, to folks but anything beyond those i think we really start to like i said to, um stand in the way of what the constitution is meant to protect yeah and and uh, and I don't want to do that. Yep. It's really wild looking at the national landscape of it because you've got states now eliminating carry law. Like it's going back to constitutional law where they don't need a permit to conceal or, or open carry. So there's like there's a huge divide in our country. And I would say there's a huge divide in the New River Valley, mm-hmm. you know, and maybe even so because Christiansburg is pretty diverse. Mm-hmm. You know, Christiansburg is is a tight race. Yeah. A lot of times, especially in big elections, Christiansburg, Blacksburg, well, not so much Blacksburg. Blacksburg is pretty heavy one way. Yeah. But Christiansburg is like really, really tight. Mm-hmm. Christiansburg will swing it one way or the other in a lot of, in a lot of times. Right. So and, and, and we, we vote more. We vote more on the on the um, the jockey than the horse. Right. So if we like a person, we don't it, we don't necessarily care if it's D or R. We just we like the person. We go with the person. Absolutely. You know? I think 
that's something that our generation is seeing a lot more. You know, we run as independents for town council. I am an independent. Yeah. And I think we are seeing that a lot in our generation. You know, maybe I line up in, you know, one way um, on, on some of my issues, I, I lean more towards a Republican side and maybe some I lean towards a more Democratic side. Yeah. And uh, and I think people we can look at the whole picture and go, but I still think I can get behind this um, because on an independent view, you protect things or you stand for some things that are really important to me that are my deal breakers. The difference for me right now is the populist movement versus the establishment movement. Like the establishment wants to maintain and and uh, the people want different things than what the power wants, mm-hmm. and I'm I am an anti-establishment guy for sure. So like when I see when I see like I wonder if Blacksburg does the same. Like do they party affiliate in Blacksburg or do they? I don't do think the, so. I think that's a state regulation from the election board. Hmm. I think we all are required to run as independents. That doesn't mean you can't pursue. Uh, a party affiliation or an endorsement, I guess I should say, but you will run as an independent on the ballot. That's that's strange, and it's kind of like they want to try to eliminate the anxiety of the the party system in the local communities. I would be interested to look that up to see if that's like statewide, because I can't imagine I can't imagine that uh, that it is like I just like I, I want I want to know where my people stand. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's like a I think it's like a uh, like a back room. It feels like a back room thing that nobody's going to affiliate and stand, put their flag in the ground. Yeah. I want I want strong people that are willing to put uh, their flag in the ground. And that's why I'd be a horrible politician. <laughs> I, I'd be a horrible politician because I um, I'm going to speak my mind in a way that. It's not going to hit you right. You, you're, you've, you've executed all of these, these comebacks, these rebuttals, or these, this conversation, in a perfect way. <laughs> like, like for me, I would just be like, "That's stupid," you know, like, and like, like we're not going to do that. <laughs> and but, but you're like, okay, like, you know, you're bringing that. Um, you know, there's something to the feminine touch to it too. You know, mm-hmm. and I think, I think I like seeing a lot of uh, females coming out in leadership roles. So like you're like from just this conversation, I feel really good about like, if you can get on, I feel like really good that you're going to make an impact. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tough to, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say that I'm a people pleaser. I don't think you could run for elected office and be a people pleaser, but I do like to make people happy. I want them to feel like they've been heard and that I've considered their points of view. And a lot of the time when I hear other points of view, it improves or, you know, reshapes my own to be a better point of view. So, you know, there is a little bit of um, desire to please people, make them happy. You want the citizens to be happy. You, you know, anyone in town council wants to make decisions that just make everyone happy, but you can't. So you really have to dig down deep and go, based on everything that I know, all the research I've done and everyone that I've spoke to, where can I comfortably, ethically, morally sort of sit on this decision? And am I always going to be right? Maybe not. Probably not. Um, ask my husband. Definitely not. <laughs> but, you know, I'll get, you know, I think if uh, if we're at least open to hearing that information, then we can get to the most right standpoint. I would I would want to encourage everybody on this level of government to not have a predetermined decision. You know, there's there's mm-hmm. so many backroom deals. I mean, I, I, I know I mean, I'm connected on like with some people that are in, you know, on the council and, and I'm observant enough to know that decisions have been made before the citizens even get a chance to chime in. Mm-hmm. They're, they're coming into that room <clears throat> with a predetermined yes or no. And they have no they're only letting the citizens speak and soak that in because that's a necessary part of the process. And they, they don't ever then empathize and have an opportunity to change their mind. And I want to open up uh, more opportunity for people to leave that decision on the table in the moment that they're making it, mm-hmm. you know, and, and see what the outcry is to the community in the open forum of it. And, and if someone, if someone has an argument that is valid, let that sway your decision. If you feel like that is 
uh, a valid point. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, there's so many backroom incentive incentives and you just, you know, you know that, that, that everybody's not always above board and everything. Mm -hmm. There's somebody getting a contract that they would have never gotten if they weren't on town council, something like that's happening. So I just want objective people that have very little financial incentive that will make decisions for the people mm -hmm. and not for themselves. Yeah. So well, that is, you know, that's my nature. And actually, that's my day job is to ask questions that dig down to the heart of is this a good idea or is this a bad idea? Is this a smart plan? Is this a bad plan? So, you know, that's one of the strengths I think that I bring to town council is the fact that I like to ask those questions. I enjoy opposing viewpoints and my decisions are never made until I have heard as much information as I possibly can up until that moment I should make the decision. Right. Um, you know, and I'm sure people will talk and they'll they'll sway and they'll have knee-jerk reactions. But in the end, I always want to hear more information. And I always want to leave my opinion open until it's time to make that decision. Just because if you're right, why would you fear information from any other viewpoint? Yeah. You know, won't it just reaffirm the decision that you want to make? And if you're wrong and you hear information from a better viewpoint, won't it just improve what you think? So that's kind of my stance on it. So let's let's talk about what you do for your day job mm -hmm. and uh, and that because you know this salary is not going to pay any bills. <laughs> I mean, this is just this is anybody that does this is is a total community service it's like it's like a saint unless unless you are that person that that feels like you can pull power and get contracts or, or incentivize the the people around you um so so let's just get into like what you do on a daily and what you'll continue to do if you're elected and how that is gonna you know you just said how it's gonna transfer transfer over so just tell us what you do do okay so i work in emergency management i've been in emergency management for almost 14 years and i absolutely love my career i have worked in higher education, public health, nonprofit. Uh, I've done volunteer and donations management. I've worked for local government, of course, as a former employee of Christiansburg. I've also worked for state government, which is where I work now in the state government um, department of emergency management. I love my job. I have the best job. Of course, you know, I have to draw that line between my viewpoints and, and what they stand for. And of course, you know, all the viewpoints are mine, yeah. but I truly enjoy my job. Uh, the biggest part of my daily activities, you know, in addition to supporting emergency responses and, and recoveries, like I'm helping with now uh, in response to COVID, um, when I'm not doing a pandemic response, I'm usually looking over locality plans and procedures. I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking for opportunities for things we can test. Um, I'm helping them develop objectives for plans as they've drafted to make sure that when we apply them that they're actually actionable. Um, and I and I go through and I draft questions and I get to write stories that kind of take them through a, a disaster scenario and apply that plan and then talk through, is this a really good plan? Does this have areas for improvement or do we need to provide some training? So that's kind of what I do now in a nutshell. Interesting. That's a, and, and and that's a state level job. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the uh, you know the the news cycle? You know, on some alternative, like you know, you trying to go find news on uh, YouTube. They're starting to talk about like COVID passports. What do you think about that idea? <laughs> I, I got to be honest, I don't know a lot about what they plan to do with a COVID passport. Yeah. I, I mean, I really don't know. Um, I guess I get the idea behind showing that you've had your vaccination in order to access services. Um, there's not a lot I can do about that at a local level, I don't right. think. I mean, I guess there are ways that that could impact us at a local level, you know, if we were to deny services based on if you had your vaccine. But I truly think that if you want a vaccination, that should be up to you. Uh, yeah. You should be able to get that. And um and if you don't want to get that, that should also be up to you and to deny people services that their taxes pay for or services that they'd like. I mean, surely if you're a private business, you can make those decisions for yourself. But I am not a particular fan of uh, pressuring anyone to, to get a vaccine that they don't want to get. Yeah. Even though I have gotten the vaccine for myself. Yeah, I noticed that. Um, and that's fine. Like it, this is this is an individual thing, you know, like. Like, um, you know, we have individual, th this, this country was set up for individual liberty, mm -hmm. you know, to do the things that you want to do, uh, to secure the things that you want to, you know, you want to secure. And, um, you know, if you're in the, if you're in the, the spot of like, this isn't going to kill me thing, um, you know, it's probably going to be more like a seasonal flu type situation. 
uh, for for the majority of like our age group and, and anybody that's not immune compromised, you know, why am I going to inject something that's not actually? Uh, it's it's only an emergency use status. I mean, it's not fully approved through the FDA, right? So well, I, it, through the emergency use, the FDA has fully approved it. What they did is just a you know approved it faster, I guess you could say. But it, I mean, the FDA is given the thumbs up for the vaccines. I think the most important thing is that we protected our vulnerable populations. They were able yeah. to get their vaccinations first if they if they wanted to do that. Right. And you know, the fact that we're able to protect our most vulnerable, the people that need it the most, the people who are most at risk of really serious complications, they've had that opportunity. A lot of them have taken advantage of it. That makes me feel a lot better. You know, I I always want to look for um, to, to make sure that decisions that we make are decisions that don't harm or affect other people. And if those vulnerable populations are safe and protected, then I feel better. You know, I, I don't feel that those passports are, are really something that um, I think it's more of a hindrance than it is a, a help. Yeah. And it, it just further it just further collect data that can you, you know, be used to control, you know, as a control measure type situation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm just concerned. I'm concerned with what uh, the government wants to do to the population. That's that's mainly I have a very, very small uh, trust of uh, the establishment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I I, I want to get new blood in there. I want to get people that are younger. I want to get rid of the, you know, not, I don't know if get rid of uh, anybody is the right term, but I would like to see them move on. Mm -hmm. I would like to see them. I would like to see them uh, enjoy the you know the rest of the life that they have. Like anybody, anybody sixty five years or older, in my opinion, trying to lead uh, this group is going to have trouble. Like they don't they don't see what's coming. Mm -hmm. They don't understand. They barely have email accounts. You know, like. I yeah. mean, well, the median age in Christiansburg now is like is 38. Yeah. So uh, and I know we're we really will lose a lot of institutional knowledge for the outgoing members who have been in there, who have spent years getting to know policies and budgets and procedures and committees. There's lots of institutional knowledge that I that I know that, we're, you know, we, we are going to lose that. And that's really hard. But I think that, the, you know, the median age is not highly reflected in council right now. So I, I would like to see that. Yeah. No and I think with the candidates that are running this year, there's, you know, we're seeing younger generations come up, be interested, be willing to step up and provide that service um, and then provide it as a service to Christiansburg, not because they want attention, but because they, they want to support their town. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and I like the way you put it. Like we're, there is going to be a loss. I mean, there's going to be, you know, there's going to be uh, someone that's very familiar with how things work, and and just making sure that we can collect that knowledge and and be better because of the work that they've done. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. That makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, like like we don't we don't want that to just go away. We want to soak that in, and we want to use that knowledge, right. but in a way that is more of like the time that we live in. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I tell my clients when I go to them is like I market in the time we live in. I don't do, uh, <laughs> I don't do Runner Times ads. <laughs> you know, I don't do uh, you know magazine ads. You know, I advertise on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And, and 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 there's still agents that that do the home place magazine if it's still around I'm sure there's people doing it it's just not effective mm -hmm. you know it's not price it's not priced properly or you know it's way overpriced you know like that stuff is uh is not where the eyeballs are yeah. so like so we bring a different dynamic if we can if we can get that information and 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 hold that information and and use it in the proper way um then we can be that much more better. I mean, mm -hmm. just that that much more effective, I right? Agree. Yeah, and I, you know, I think people always look at change and they go, "It's time for a change." They're the worst. But really, <laughs> what what worked years ago, just because it is something 
different works better now doesn't mean it never worked. Oh, that's true. You know, and there, yeah, and true. we've had council people who have made really wonderful decisions. They've guided this beautiful progression of the town. They've done some incredible work. But just because those things don't might not work now, or just because certain decisions may not be the right ones today, doesn't mean that they didn't still provide value when they were there. Change is really hard, but it you know you can't negate all of their experience because now it's time for a change. Yeah. Hey, you know, as as much as I just dumped on like old school advertising. I still direct mail I, because I know that it works mm-hmm. with 55 and older, you know, and I know people still go to their mailbox every day. Mm-hmm. I don't, but I know they do. So like, I still I still have to advertise in the way that they want to be advertised to, right. even though that even though it costs me more money. And it, 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 it you know, as far as like cost per lead acquired, like I'm spending more money, but it's still equal. And it still equals profit. Yeah. We have to go where people are. Yeah. You have to take information to them. That's the one thing, especially about local government. If you don't take information to where people are at, uh, they're not they are very unlikely to see it or find it. If you share the wrong information and you don't take the correct information back to them where they are at, they will never know that what they heard was wrong. Um, If you don't tell them where your thought process is, where you're getting it from, if you don't pull in those documents and that reasoning and put it in front of them where they are, then they will probably not be able to follow your, your, your thought process and get behind you in a meaningful way. Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. I mean, it's true. It's all true. Um, let's go into kind of like your your uh, Christiansburg connection. Like, how did you end up? How did you end up in Christiansburg? And we'll kind of wrap it up with this. Like, we'll okay. give you know this story about how how you've come to town and how you've loved the town and how you know um, and you know now you're getting involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's get that story. Okay. So I was born in Ocala, Florida. We moved up when I was three and a half. So really, Christiansburg is home. Uh, we moved up here. My parents had a uh, brother and sister for me. Um, and we lived in Christiansburg for quite a long time. Um, we actually, I grew up on Haymaker Street. Yeah. I just drove by there the other day and saw my old house. It's just very strange. You never think when you're a child that one day you'll drive past your home as an adult <laughs> and think, fun, you know, have fond family memories. But uh, yeah, I grew up on Haymaker Street and uh, my parents worked in juvenile detention. So you can imagine how much fun that is growing up with two parents who uh, are very strict (laughs) and don't give you a lot of leeway. Uh, But I grew up in Christiansburg. I went to Christiansburg Primary School. I went to the elementary school. Um, We did move to Blacksburg as, you know, when I was a teenager and I uh, finished my schooling there before getting homeschooled because... My parents worked in juvenile detention. Right. Um, and so we've lived in or around Christiansburg for really my whole life. Um, you know, my parents eventually ended up moving to Draper. I took a job down in North Carolina, and I would come back. I would take a job. You know, I took a one-year job. I traveled back and forth to Fairfax, and then I came back. Because there's always a draw to Christiansburg that I just is, is inexplainable. Yeah. And then when I married my husband, Robbie, and we had our daughter, you know, we decided we need to find a place where, where do we want to raise our kids? We have Nora and we have Luke and Natalie, they're teenagers now. Uh, But at the time we thought, you know, what has everything that a family needs to be happy? Where do we, what school systems do we love? Um, You know, what has the amenities to, to give us those family outings that we want to, you know, do and spend time together doing and Christiansburg was just it you know Robbie grew up in Christiansburg of course he's lived here uh, for just most of his life and so it was an easy decision for us to look at the amenities and the beauty and the progression of Christiansburg and the opportunities here it was very easy for us to say this is the spot this is this is what's going to connect us to every other facet of our life quickly and easily and happily Uh, so yeah we purchased our home five years ago about five years ago and we've been here ever since that's awesome. That's a good story. <laughs> I, you know, I love I love people that are cheerleaders and champions of uh, of our area. You know, too too many people um, underappreciate it. I think, and mm-hmm. and uh, you know, we we do need to have little little things, a uh, little more social things, a little more activity. You know, uh, a little bit more opportunity. But we're getting there. Mm-hmm. I mean, man, we're getting there, and it's and it's getting good. And you know, it has a lot to do with Virginia Tech, but it's not all Virginia Tech, you know. Right. But but Virginia Tech is a big part of it. Um, but just the people, the people that um, you know, we need to keep 
are great people. And I'm so glad that you guys uh, decided that. I, I'm glad. I like those uh, those stories that, hey, like this is, uh, we chose this. This wasn't something we were forced to. We could have went anywhere, but this is where we wanted to be. Mm-hmm. And, and and it's awesome that there's a story out there about Christiansburg uh, like that. Yeah. And um, I think that's a great place to stop. Uh, did, did we have any, did we have any questions? Yeah, no, none so far. Okay. Well, I think this is one of the better episodes and uh, first political candidate, you know, like, no. like that, th- you know, uh, when I, when I visioned this show and like I told you off air, I'm trying to be like the, the Joe Rogan of the <laughs> new river Valley. Right. So right. like, I want to have these conversations. I want to get to know, I want to get to know you. I want to have a relationship, um, you know, that's meaningful with people. And I want this community to wake up, you know, the new river Valley, the new river Valley needs to wake up. And, uh, with people, people like you in, in leadership, um, it, it's a sign that people are waking up. So that's good. That's yeah. good. And, um, yeah. Well, I appreciate it. My competitive side says be first at everything, but my, uh, analytical side says let other people do it and then watch what they do. So I appreciate you letting me just embrace my competitive side, Yeah, no doubt. get out here and, and answer some questions and, uh, and let, you know, share, share what I'm about with people. I appreciate that. Yeah. So where can they find you and like, where are they going to, like, this is going to be a part of the governor race, right? Like you're going to be on the ballot. Yeah. When, when's the when is the when is the election? This the, the election, governor the governor race, yeah, right? It's in November. It's yeah. November second is the election. I have a website and I have a Facebook right now. I also have plenty of methods that I can be contacted from those. My website is Tanya T A N Y A for Town Council dot com. Perfect. And um, and then of course I'm on Facebook, Tanya Hockett for Christiansburg Town Council is what you can search to find me. And there's lots of communication methods there. I answer my messages and my emails very quickly. And um, and so I would love to hear from anybody who has questions about anything I've said today or anything else they read. What's the what's the rules on donation? I'm allowed to accept donations. I have a treasurer designated and I have an account, so I'm following all the rules. I've received a few do, uh, donations already, but if anybody's interested in donating, of course, that's always appreciated, never expected, um, but they can go to my website and there's a place that says get involved. They click on that tab. They can click on a link and donate there. Perfect. Well, we're going to enjoy the ride, <laughs> watching you do your thing and being there to support you and uh, hold you accountable. Absolutely. And, um, you know, it's just, it's going to be fun to watch this thing, you know. And uh, again, appreciate you being on the show. And um, until next week, uh, next week, what we got going on next week? What, what are we doing there? I can't remember. Well, you'd have to give me a minute to check our. Uh, no problem. Hey, <laughs> hey, we'll just we'll just wrap it up. Uh, typically, I like to I like to plug next week's show, but I don't have it done on my outline here, so no big deal. Uh, we'll catch you guys next week.